And welcome back to your town. My name is Steve Elzey. I am the president of your Sanctuary Productions. And we're here with, in the Will Bullis studio, I'm calling it right now, because we're here <laughs> with local artist Will Bullis. And I say local artist, he is world renowned without a doubt. Will, welcome to the program. Thank you, Steve. It's good to see you again. Boy, it's so great to talk to you. I, I, I really enjoy being around you. Because I, I, I noticed the other day, when I walk away, I'm always smiling real big. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you to start off is, in the, the the early days, maybe even your childhood, mm -hmm. did you ever did you have any indications you would be so passionate about art? Uh, no indications that the passion was going to be as great as it is today. Okay, okay. and it gets greater every day. Okay, but there were signs and signals from uh, appreciative parents, my own, and other uh, parents of fellow students and so on, uh, who painted the background for your li the, your little third grade play or whatever. And I always volunteered for it because I like doing that kind of stuff. And so I always got uh, the beginnings of kudos for who painted this, who did this. Oh, a little, a little uh, 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 Billy Bullis did, okay. Back then I was known as Billy, okay. Billy okay. When I met my wife, she said, you're not Billy anymore, you're Will, okay, which was 48 years ago. But at any rate, yeah, there were the early signals like that, and, mm -hmm. and it was something that uh, came relatively easy, and mm -hmm. it was, I don't know whether I consciously said I'm going to pursue this path, but I certainly followed that direction. Oh, that's terrific. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you, you said the passion grows mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. But, but when you started out, when you made that decision, mm -hmm. what was a day like? And the, the oh, uh, um, going through art school, and, and I went, I graduated from uh, Sunny Slope High School in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, on a um, uh, art scholarship and a drama scholarship. Okay. So those two kind of went hand in hand until I got to Arizona State University, and I started out as a uh, drama uh, major. Okay, but after working with the drama students, I, I was convinced that they were all lunatics. Okay, <laughs> so I switched my major to uh, art and, and my minor to drama. But it, it kind of gave me uh, a little bit of social connection, social consciousness with these people, mm -hmm. and also with my art, I continued to pursue that, and I continued mm -hmm. to get uh, little by little building accolades. Okay, and then finally, when I um, applied to the Brooks Institute and Santa Barbara and was accepted there, um, uh, the, and I was the, the student teacher ratio went from 75 to 1 uh, down to at the Brooks Institute down to maybe 5 or 6 to 1. And so you had almost hands on individual uh, instruction, which was an ab absolutely fabulous uh, uh, fire in my belly for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the early, you, I say the early days. Mm -hmm, when I look mm -hmm. at your paintings, I couldn't tell, you know, what is an early one, mm -hmm. an early one, or later one. But I, w right now, I'd like to bring up, let, let's say, let's bring up um, rhinoceros. Okay, but that's a, talk about rhinoceros. I look at that, and it seems like yesterday. But when I actually looked at the date on the painting from mm -hmm. uh, all the my archives, because we archive everything that I do, and we've been doing that for thirty years. I looked at the date on that, and that was uh, the rhinoceros was created 31 years ago. Okay. Wow. Uh, and I say wow too, uh, um, uh, because n now I, I'm at the age now where I love to talk in decades. You know, I can say <laughs> things like, "Well, I did that thir three decades ago." You know, but and uh, and, it, and even the uh, the the character image that I did, uh, duct tape. Okay, which has had so much mileage and been yes. around for so long. And the other day, when you d gave me some you know, hints about some of the questions you were going to ask, and I went back and I looked at the date on that, and that was created 20 seven years ago. I developed the style early on, okay, and I have stuck with that, refined it, the tools have remained the same, toothbrushes and sponges and things like that, but always there was a connect with watercolor because it was the easiest, uh, uh, so even regardless of people saying it's the hardest medium, it is not, it's like anything, you work with it long enough, it becomes second nature. Mm -hmm. So that became second nature early on. Mm -hmm. Then the third part that I would bring into, or the third nature would bring into it was the narrative. What story are you going to tell? It's more than just pigment on paper or mm -hmm. paint on canvas. To me, I love the narrative. I love the story because I think I grew up with uh, American illustrators being my favorite artists, whether it was N.C. Wyeth or Howard Pyle or whatever, uh, Pirates on an Abandoned Island and so mm -hmm. on. But uh, it was there, to me, that ha there had to be a story to go with it. Mm -hmm. And the style developed reasonably realistic style, but certainly representational style. So that when you look at a painting, you know it's a duck or a pig or, or, or whatever, even uh, people. I do a lot of figurative people. Uh, figure paintings, but that's mostly reserved for competitions and things like that. Okay. Because the one that makes me, the, the ones, the paintings that make me connect with an audience mm -hmm. easily, okay, and I don't mean just a buyer or, or, or a collector, but friends uh, across the board is the humorous ones, okay, mm -hmm. and that's what people connect with, 
people say to me, oh, I love your sense of humor, then I have to correct them and say, it's not my sense of humor, it's our sense of humor. Okay, If it wasn't our sense of humor and you didn't get it, it wouldn't mean anything. So, it wouldn't be funny, right? So that's where I go, and it's second nature for me all over again. So. Well, you, you, I really, really enjoyed watching you deliver your presentation, mm -hmm. the history mm -hmm. of comedy mm -hmm. in, in art. The, the history of, the complete the history com of humor <laughs> in art. There okay. you go. <laughs> uh, and then the, the next, the second slide that follows up after this, uh, that says, maybe. Okay. <laughs> that's so, right. <laughs> uh, that, that's my, that my waiver. Um, <laughs> and there really has never been strong humor in art until uh, a cartoonist came along, okay? Mm. And it was more of a satire, so much of it political. Right. I really don't go in a political direction, okay? I like uh, that humorous piece that as many people as I can bring in can relate to and understand. And that's, to me, where my key is for leveling the playing field and understand what my artwork is all about. And, and it ser has served me very well. Now, you, you were telling me the other day that sometimes um, uh, artists can can add to their income through licensing, and, ab and ab absolutely, without a doubt, um, so much different than three decades ago right. or four decades ago. There's that decade again. <laughs> um, when y you completed a painting, it went to a collector or a buyer, okay, for their collection, and few people ever saw it again, okay, once it was out of the gallery or out of your studio. But today. Uh, through this amazing cosmos of the digital world, okay, yes. it ends up on th those images. If you have had the wherewithal to keep track of these things, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we archive absolutely everything I ever do, and it have been for thirty some years, that then becomes an invaluable resource, and we call it our, our archival library that we could go back to. Um, you get a call the couple weeks ago, and it was from uh, an organization that that does uh, scratcher lottery tickets. Okay, it mm -hmm. sounds crass and mundane. Mundane. My my fellow artists, uh, some of them really sneer at this, and I and I mm -hmm. understand. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, they are purists. Okay, and I mm -hmm. am purist when I do my painting. But when mm -hmm. that painting is done and gets digitally recorded into our archives, then it's free for all. Okay, okay. and because artists own the copyright to all their works. Okay, right. unless they give it up. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, which I never do. Um, then can go on to be lottery tickets, uh, T-shirts, coffee mugs, etc. And, and some of the things that are coming out of the woodwork these days of what translates uh, uh, a two-dimensional image that an artist creates is just amazing. And, and with 3D printing, who knows oh, where, where with, things will go. In fact, go, I was huh? in San Francisco the other day and mm -hmm. saw a shop that uh, does 3D printing. You mm -hmm. step into a booth, it does mm -hmm. the entire scanning, and, and then spits out this little uh, figurine of you. And <coughs> the detail and the color and the patterns on your clothing is just mind-blowing. <laughs> I love that. And who knows where this is all going. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Um, wh wh one of the other things I want, wanted to ask you about, though, serious... Uh, on a serious note, because Will, uh, tell us a little bit about some of the awards you won. You're a serious artist. Well, uh, when you've been painting this many decades, <laughs> um, uh, hopefully you get better at what you do, okay? Mm -hmm. And if not, there's a fundamental problem there, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, going through the art school, the lessons, the figure drawings, and so on and so forth, you become a little more observant and astute, so when there is a uh, subject matter before you, you you have to come to, 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 to uh, uh, a, a meaningful uh, uh, relationship with your soul and with your ability and your talent and say, I can do this. Okay. An artist can do anything, paint anything, go anywhere, okay? And I, uh, I live by that every day because when I sit down at the watercolor table, uh, five days out of the week, okay, and sit down and begin painting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I realize that I know I can paint that, draw that, okay, but mm -hmm. why and how and what's the narrative? Then I work a story into it. Sometimes it's a, it's a title, sometimes the, t the title comes later, it depends. But I like that combination of the story and the image because after this many decades, uh, my fans and friends who look for the next art piece of artwork, they immediately want to go and see what the title on the painting is because they know there's a link there. You know, And most of the time it's humorous. Mm -hmm. The stuff that is not humorous, the figurative stuff mostly that I do, uh, is reserved for um, uh, competitions. Okay. okay, I'm a signature member of the American Watercolor Society, uh, the National Watercolor Society, elected to membership of the Knickerbocker Artists of uh, New York, and it goes on, but that's only because I firmly believe you must be with your peers, okay? Yes. Not just the guy next door, but you're with artists that are of your proficiency, have be of your professionalism, and you're competing with that. And uh, I may enter 25 shows annually, mm -hmm. and out of that maybe 
four or five I get accepted to. Oh, okay. And then once in a while, if I'm really lucky and the uh, juror or jurors, okay, don't have incredible hangovers or something, I may win an award. Okay. <laughs> and I have taken some significant awards that I'm very proud of. But it's it's also something that you really can't rest on because I'm anxious to get back to the watercolor table, back to the next narrative, and how am I going to translate that for more people, okay? And it's been such a great connect for me, daily, weekly, uh, decade-wise, so. All right, and Will, you live here, uh, you've told me you love living here, mm -hmm. uh, you think it's a beautiful area. Do you feel that in the Monterey Bay Area, mm -hmm. there is an energy or a stimulus or something mm -hmm. that makes people more creative or want to create more? I, I, I think definitely yes. I have so many friends that are plain air painters, okay? They realize the value, the nurturing, the energy they get from going out and painting out of doors, okay? I do not do that, okay? Mm -hmm. I've tried it and I'm really bad at it, okay? Because I usually end up gawking and walking off a cliff somewhere. And any, anyway, I like... Studio painting, okay, for okay. a number of reasons. Uh, the proximity of the uh, refrigerator, okay, <laughs> the proximity of the bathroom, okay, things like that. That uh, out at Point Lobos that I've tried, I've tried it, did not work. I said this is ridiculous. I'm not, I, uh, I can't be that far away from the refrigerator. Uh, so. Uh, it's one of those things that I really appreciate the, the plain air stuff, and I see what the value of this is. And I don't. You, when I t you and I talked a little bit about this. I'm not sure there may be a mystical connection somewhere mm. between the ocean okay. and the water and this glorious Central Coast. Okay, right. and working with watercolor. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There, there may be. If you want to go there, okay, right. it's right up there with unicorns and, and mm -hmm. you know, and sure. uh, <laughs> for, certainly benevolent. And if that's if that's the connection you have, then you go for it. And it's it's a connection that. It's people ask me, aren't you ever going to run out of ideas? Well, absolutely not. If you run out of ideas, you're not thinking, okay? Right. Because there is a, a, a connect with the love of painting, the actual act of painting, and uh, I'm always in being introduced to, to new uh, subject matter, okay? And then I say, what am I going to do with this? How am I going to uh, describe the narrative uh, on this piece? And it just, it's, it's, it's not broken, so I don't try to fix it. Well, we, I, I, I really want to spend some time looking at some of your paintings and have you talk about them. But, but would you like to talk a little bit about the Carmel Art Association just briefly before we go there? Definitely. Uh, my wife and I moved here. We both uh, graduated from uh, art school out of Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> and we finished and said, okay, now what do we do? Well, let's, where's a good art colony? We thought maybe Southern California. We said, no, that's a little crazy. Let's, how about Central California? So we, we read up and knew about Carmel and the area and what a great art colony it was. So we said, bingo, that's it. Came here in 1974, fell in love with it, okay. In 1980, I was uh, elected to membership at the Carmel Art Association. In 1982, I became president, okay. And so I've been a member since 1980, and I've been president off and on, whenever they will have me or I'm the last man standing. I'm not <laughs> sure which is which. But I'm currently president of the Carmel Art Association, um, and it's, it's an organization that I love. We have about 80, 85 active artists. We're very proud of the fact that we rehang the entire gallery the first Wednesday of every month uh, with brand new artworks. Uh, it's one of the largest galleries in town. We've been around uh, since 1927. The uh, gallery is located on Dolores between uh, the 5th and 6th. Um, we rehang the gallery the first Wednesday of every month and that following Saturday we have a grand artist reception every month. Few organizations or uh, galleries mm -hmm. in the world right. can claim that uh, that functioned every month, a brand new. And because the, uh, this community, the Central Coast, and particularly Carmel, Carmel Valley, and so on, and I'm also on the board of directors of the Carmel Valley Art Association, I'm trying to keep myself busy, okay? Mm -hmm. um, until, uh, not, not until my retirement, because we artists do not retire, we right. die, okay? Right. That's <laughs> it, simple as that. Uh, but at any rate, uh, realizing the, the value of the uh, visitors to this area, okay, yes. who help help us uh, through their generous donations, th through their visiting and some that maintain the, the, um, uh, the sanctuary, the marine sanctuary. They help maintain the Carmel Art Association and a variety of other wonderful uh, nonprofits around the, uh, and the Carmel Art Association is a nonprofit organization. We work hand in hand with other nonprofits, the Monterey Museum of Art, uh, Arts Council, Arts Habitat, et cetera. So there's a lot of uh, cross-pollination mm -hmm. with us to not only uh, enjoy and appreciate, but help uh, maintain uh, this, the beauty on the Central Coast. Carmel Art Association right there in downtown Carmel. Mm -hmm, so folks, mm -hmm. visit it if you have a chance. Um, well, let's talk a little bit about uh, paintings. Tell me about California styling. Okay. Uh, 
<laughs> we, we, were, we had discussed possibly doing something with connection to uh, the um, uh, marine sanctuary and so and water mm -hmm. and so on. Sure. And I figured it, there was a piece I did California style. And you can see that the uh, the ducks are on roller skates. And this is typical Venice Beach. My son and my daughter-in-law lived in Venice Beach for a while. And we would go down and visit. And here was this madness, you know, on the sidewalks, but on the beautiful beach and so right. on. So it was kind of a parody of that. Okay, mm -hmm. people involved in the roller skating on Venice Beach know exactly what I'm talking about. And I think my little ducks portray that kind of thing. Absolutely. Uh, and so it moves, it's just, you know, one of those things I had to have a little bit of a narrative and then there gave the image. How about Celebration at Sea? That, that's very uh, interesting. I was commissioned um, to do a, uh, a uh, an image of um, something that was deep sea involved, okay? So oh. I, so I, I, I uh, introduced the a, a, a deluxe bottle of champagne to an octopus. <laughs> who, if, if you've ever tried to open it, your first time trying to open a bottle of champagne, it's virtually impossible. Okay, and you know you're going to break something, and probably on you. But at any rate, I, so I had the octopus removing the cork from it, and, and it's kind of a play on words. Uh, celebration at sea. Okay, and you sure. uh, got you think of crossing the, uh, the the time zone on a big ship, and Neptune comes out, and so. On. But this was kind of like that, and it was w it was done many years ago, long before uh, the Little Mermaid, etc. So oh. it was kind of my little exploration into that. Area. Well, it's a gorgeous. It's, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful mm -hmm. work of art. Mm -hmm. um, Klaus and the Deep Blue Sea. Every once in a while, I will, you know, drift outside of the box. Okay. And, okay. And uh, Klaus was an imaginary character that I made up, and he's a little, a little mouse. Okay. And he is the typical everyman. Okay. A lot like the little ducks I paint. They're, they, you could put them in any situation and go anywhere. So uh, just imaginary narrative of Klaus, this little mouse. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, wanted to be a, a, a deep sea diver. So I went to the internet and I looked up uh, vintage deep sea diver helmets and so on. So I mm -hmm. put him in a little helmet and with a backdrop behind him and you could see the little curtain and everything and the fake fish and so on. Mm -hmm. And it is one of those situations where again an artist can go anywhere do anything. Okay. I'm a, a, a prolific painter. I'm mm -hmm. a fast painter mm -hmm. because I don't Oh, I don't weigh in and say, well, now, should I do this or shouldn't I <laughs> do that? No, I just say, hey, Will, you got to do it, do it, get it done, and it's over with, and then go on to the next one, okay? Mm -hmm. And then as soon as those images are done, then they go into our archival library. So okay. it's, it, it, I, it's just a constant, almost keeping up with my ideas, okay, but never quite there, okay? How many, do, do you have you ever counted how many pictures you do in a year? Well, yeah, a, a rough count as I have, uh, as, of now, as of last week when I finished my last painting, it was uh, 2,026, okay, that are in our archives. Wow. Our, yeah. So what that means, as soon as the painting is finished, it gets the photographed high resolution or scanned high resolution, goes into our archives, okay? And then, thank goodness for the cloud, okay? Uh, <laughs> absolutely, uh, the technology is amazing and it is so wonderful artists because, again, part of that uh, trip to going anywhere and being able to do anything is the access to uh, uh, your images, the cloud, the technology today, okay? And the toys, you yourself, we were talking about Premiere Pro and producing videos. Like, there isn't anything we can't do if we are not too lazy or too stupid to go look for it. And we can find it and get it and make it one part of your collection of tools. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, please come back and see us again. I would you, love this to. This was just such a blast. Thank I you would so love much. to. Thank you, Steve. Okay. I would love to. And we will be right back. Thanks for watching Your Town.